Jason, play some show. And the Cowboys are without two key starters tonight. Left tackle Tyron Smith is out after his back locked up on him in practice on Friday. And cornerback Orlando Skandrick is out with hamstring injuries to both legs. As for the Bears, both Jay Cutler and running back Kadeem Carey are out on offense. Defensively, they're missing nearly half of their starters, including last year's leading sacker, Lamar Houston. And with multiple injuries in the defensive backfield, the Bears secondary will dress four rookies tonight. Thank you, Michelle. Boy, that is playing with a short deck. John Fox, Jason Garrett, the coaches. Meanwhile, Minnesota 3-0 and beat Carolina today. Green Bay at 2-1. Chicago still seeking win number one. Philadelphia routing Pittsburgh today. They're 3-0. and The Giants lose to Washington, and Dallas tries to go to 2-1. Kicking off is Connor Barth. Robbie Gold, who was making a lot of money, was let go just before the beginning of the season. So Barth, who spent a lot of time with Tampa in the past, to kick off with Lucky Whitehead in his second year as a Cowboy back to receive. Chicago won the toss, and they deferred. So Mr. Prescott ready to go to work right away after the kickoff. And Barth sends this one about eight yards deep. And so right off the bat from the 25-yard line, the new rule this year, here comes the fourth-round draft choice out of Mississippi State. He was the 135th player picked in the draft. He was the eighth quarterback picked in the draft. And he figured to learn at the knee of Tony Romo when preseason began. But Romo was hurt in Seattle. Prescott took over, had a great preseason, started opening day. No touchdowns and no interceptions in his first two games. And Ezekiel Elliott, the rookie out of Ohio State, the overall number four pick in the draft, is the running back. And they give it to Elliott with a big hole. And the rookie from Ohio State for a gain of 22 taken down by Tracy Porter. What a beginning for the Dallas Cowboys. A lot of pro bowlers up front here for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's focus this time on the center, Travis Frederick. Going to come down, get a shot, help his buddy Zach Martin, then get up on that second level against Nick Kwiatkowski. And I tell you, this young man, after fumbling twice last week, he wasn't going to give that one up. Well, you know the Cowboys have a great line, but probably the best guy on the line, Tyron Smith, inactive tonight, the left tackle. Off play action, the pass is caught on the Chicago side of the field, and that's Dez Bryant breaking tackles, picking up a first down. So two plays, two first downs for Dallas. How about that throw? Akeem Hicks right in the face of Dak Prescott. He didn't even get a chance to set his feet carrying out that fake and just had to sort of flip it up over the top and got enough mustard on it to get it out well, there. Well, that's not a happy sight for Dallas as Bryant was limping toward the bench and now has to go down and will need some assistance. So Des Bryant, who suffered a foot fracture on opening night here last year and missed the first half of the season. See if we can see what uh, took place here. Well, as he got dragged down, you could see he kind of leaned into that right leg a little bit. See right here. Christian Jones who pulls him down. Oh, you can see that right ankle folding underneath him there. Well, there's Jerry Jones. And you talk about taking the air out of the building. You get a 22-yard run. Then you get an 11-yard pass. And now you got your number one receiver and one of the best in football being examined on the bench. So Lucky Whitehead and Bryce Butler come in as wide outs. That's Whitehead coming into the slot on the right. And they give the ball here to Ezekiel Elliott to the 40. Let's take a look at that Cowboy offense. Dak Prescott, Mississippi State. Ezekiel Elliott, D, Ohio State. Dez Bryant, Oklahoma State. Terrence Williams, Baylor. Cole Beasley, SMU. Jason Witten, Tennessee. Chaz Green, Florida. Lael Collins, LSU. Travis Frederick, Wisconsin. Zach Martin, Notre Dame. Doug Free, Northern Illinois. And they can only hope that that injury to Bryant is not serious. Again, Tyron Smith, the left tackle, is out. Lance Dunbar now comes in on second and six. Prescott hanging in the pocket. He can run. He ran for a touchdown to Washington last week. 
and slides to a stop after a first down at the 32 yard line tackled there by Leonard Floyd and Bryant uh, right now appears on his way back to the locker room. Such a dynamic player, isn't he, when he's in there and so excited about Dak Prescott and what he was bringing. And you could feel that in last week they were starting to figure it out between each other. And a rough way to start this one. From the Chicago 33-yard line against the four-man front. It's Whitehead going in motion. They give it to him on an end around. Lucky Whitehead will take the ball to the 30 and we will take a look at the Chicago defense. Hakeem Hicks, University of Regina, Saskatchewan. Jonathan Bullard, University of Florida. Leonard Floyd, George, Jarrell Freeman, Mary Harden Baylor. Christian Jones, Florida State. Willie Young, North Carolina State. Tracy Porter, Indiana University. Harold Jones Cortez, University of Finley. Adrian Namus, Penn State. Jacoby Glenn, Central Florida. Craven LeBlanc, Florida Atlantic University. A beaten up Chicago defense on second down and seven. It's Elliott again to the 29 yard line and the first third down situation arising now for the Cowboys. With Ezekiel Elliott, watch him here. They're trying to get him to go a little slower and then when he sees the hole, shoot through it. So it, the numbers, if you will, are 70%, 100%. So that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a little more patience out of him. And you could tell that time he was trying to do it. So it's third down now and six at the 29. Prescott with a deep drop and then throws and that is caught. And that's become his new favorite receiver, Beasley, but he really pays the price. He picks up the first down and Adrian Amos, who ironically enough is coming back himself from a concussion. Puts the pop on Beasley, and we'll have an injury timeout for Cole right now. Man, what a shot. Okay, so the good news is Cole Beasley, the last uh, time we saw him before the commercial break, was down with his helmet off, but he put his helmet back on. He's walking around on the bench as if he is fine. In the meantime, Lovey Smith, I'm Lovey Smith, how am I doing here? <laughs> John Fox, only two removed. John Fox, who's in his second year as the coach, he's going to challenge this, and he'll probably win it because Beasley will come up, at least according to the yellow line, a little bit short of the first down. So if the challenge is won by the Bears, it will be fourth down and inches for the Cowboys. It looks like they already have made the assumption they're going to lose this challenge and Prescott going out there to at least give it a hard count. But with the way they've been running the football so far, you have to feel pretty good about it. And this is a Bears defense. I know Michelle went over some of this, but they are missing so many talented players on the defensive side of the ball. Danny Trevathan, Eddie Goldman, their nickelback uh, Bryce Callahan, their starting cornerback Kyle Fuller, uh, Pernell McPhee, Lamar Houston. You go right down the list, pretty amazing at this point in the season, already missing that many people on the defensive side. Craig Rolstad is the official. He'll give us the call. And here it is. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The receiver got to the 23 and one foot yard line. Thus, he is one foot short of a first down. It'll be fourth down and one foot at the 23 and one foot. Otherwise, the 23 and a third yard line, and the offense is going to stay out on the field on fourth down and inches. And this is where it always gets a little strange trying to remark the chains. Okay, where exactly were we here, you know, as they go back through this thing? Well, after I talked to Lovey Smith, I called Mike Ditka to see what else was going on. Alice picked up the phone. I just like it when you're first. <laughs> uh, first of many. Fourth and inches. Six offensive linemen in the game now. The sixth is Joe Looney. And they give it to Elliott. He's going to swing around the right side, pick up the first down, go out of bounds at the 18-yard line. 
Meanwhile, there was a game that just ended a little while ago, the Rams against the Bucks in Tampa because of a weather delay, because of storms in the area. They delayed that game for well over an hour, and the Rams come away with a win. So the Rams, who had not scored a touchdown in their first two games, got a win last week with three field goals against Seattle, put up 37 today and beat the Bucks 37-32. Des Bryant is back in the game. So Beasley's in the game. There they are in the slot and wide, bottom of the screen. Great news for the Cowboys. Prescott throws to the outside, caught by Witten. And Witten is very close, and they'll mark it inside the one yard line. Leonard Floyd, the rookie linebacker, the number one pick, covering on the play. Jason Witten sets up a first and goal. Here's what the old Wiley veteran will do to you right there. Watch this little weave route inside, back outside. And Floyd just chasing him the best that he can. But he is much more of a pass rusher than a cover guy. And the Cowboys... I think you're going to challenge this. Yep. They want Dak Prescott to have his first touchdown pass on yep. that one. Garrett comes out. He's going to contend that Witten did get into the end zone. And well, there's um, the right foot that's out of bounds. Now ruling on the field of a catch and out of bounds. Timeout. So rolls that under the hood again. Second time in six minutes. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner caught the ball and went out of bounds at the half-yard line. Dallas will be charged with a first-team timeout. Well, it's not the timeout that's the problem. If you want to challenge a play like that, and I don't agree with it, you're going to have a first and, and goal. Now you're down to one challenge, period. Fox one is challenged. He could have two more if he wins the next one, let's say. And it could be impactful later in the game. We'll find out. And Jason Garrett had more time to look at that one. They were going to be able to review it a couple more times before Timer, he had to get to the line of scrimmage. Please reset the game clock to 9.46. Put six seconds back on the clock. This is going to be the 10th play of a drive that began back at the 25-yard line. What a, a weird opening drive. It looks like you lose Bryant. Looks like you lose Beasley. You get them both back in. They send Elliott in motion. And it's a sneak, and the Cowboys think it's a touchdown. What about the officials? Man, did he take a shot. Did he get across the goal line? Harold, in reality, to the goal line, which he did. Harold Jones' forte came off the edge and absolutely drilled Dak Prescott. That's his second rushing touchdown. In Here three he comes. Games. Now watch Jones Corte come off the edge there. Yes, indeed, he did get across that line, but he paid a price for that one. But Dak Prescott continues to impress. He has yet to throw an interception in the National Football League. He did it in preseason, and everybody said, oh, big deal. Anybody can do it in preseason. And now we're on to the third game, and he still has been tremendous. This guy, at least in terms of body language everybody loves to talk about body language it looks like nothing's too big for him Dan Bailey one of the best not only now but maybe ever by the time he's done bangs it through opening drive takes five and a half minutes 75 yards Dallas leaves Chicago seven to nothing on Sunday Night Football Sunday Night Football being brought to you by the 2017 Kia Sorento learn more at Kia Dot com by Bud Light here with your team on it by Sprint call 800 Sprint one or Sprint.com and by Navy Federal Credit Union proudly serving the armed forces and their families well that is the new complex the training facility plus for the Cowboys it's called the store new world headquarters of the Cowboys Gene Jones so much a part as the whole Jones family has been and not only this stadium and how it was constructed and and designed and the accoutrement but uh, that star it, we were out there the other day look at that i mean that's a billion and a half that's the training facility it's also a 12,000 seat dome they play a lot of high school football in there and uh, let's uh, let's put it this way we've never seen anything like that and gene loves the artwork not just there but in this stadium and we've showed 
so much of it over the years. She does a great job giving it a woman's touch mm -hmm. to the game of football. Pretty spectacular. Okay, Brian Hoyer, he's been around a long time. It's his eighth year in the league. And he yep. starts, and right off the bat, they have trouble on the handoff, and he gets taken down a yard behind the line of scrimmage by Tyrone Crawford. So it was Hoyer who came on last week to finish the game after Cutler got hurt against Philadelphia. Not sure exactly what happened here. It looked like Hoyer had thoughts of putting it in his hand to throw it out wide, changed his mind sort of mid stroke, and paid the price for it. Hoyer, the starter. Most of two years ago in Cleveland, starter half of last year in Houston, and this time it is Langford taking it to the 33rd down. Take a look at the Chicago starters. Brian Hoyer, Michigan State Spartans. Jeremy Langford, Michigan State. Alshon Jeffrey, South Carolina. Eddie Royal, Virginia Tech. Kevin White, West Virginia. Zach Miller, Western Nebraska. Charles Leno Jr., Boise State. Josh Sitton. Central Florida. Cody Whitehair, Kansas State. Kyle Long, Saddleback Junior College. Bobby Massey, Ole Miss. And that Chicago line trying to provide some protection for Hoyer. Jeffrey goes in motion. Play clock at five. Good clean pocket, but the coverage is great. And Hoyer starts to take off and then throws, and that's caught. Flag down. That's Kevin White. Their top pick last year who got hurt and missed the entire season out of West Virginia and Rolstead will give us the call on what Illegal was the third hands. and four. Hands to the face, offense number 72. That's a 10 yard penalty, replay, third down. Left tackle Charles Leno Jr. That negates what would have been a first down. Which spoiled perfect protection. And once again, if you want to talk about the Achilles heel of the Dallas Cowboys, it is their inability to get pressure on the quarterback, but there you can see no question at all. Charles Leno hand to the face to Jack Crawford. So for Brian Hoyer, he really should have time to throw the ball. The Cowboys not a big blitzing team. So many of their pass rushers are suspended at this point. So the passing game should have some chances tonight for the Bears. Yeah, three key defenders are missing. It's third down and 14. It'll dump off underneath to Langford, and Langford will be stopped well short of the first down. Up at the 26-yard line by Church and Jones, the two safeties, and it's fourth down. Now, both of those guys have played so well, haven't they? Uh, Byron Jones, who I think is becoming one of the really good young stars in the league at uh, one of the safety positions, and Barry Church with that game-saving pick against Washington. Last Sunday, at FedEx Field, Patrick O'Donnell to punt. And Lucky Whitehead back to return it. Good deep angle kick. It bounces out of bounds. They'll spot it at around the 25 yard line. 6.53 left in the quarter. Seven to nothing, Cowboys. You don't have to miss a moment of tonight's game with the NBC Sports app. You can watch the game anywhere, live on your laptop, tablet, and connected TVs. So the Cowboys right back on the field. They had six first downs on their touchdown drive. The Bears had none. So the Bear defense goes back to work again. The rookie quarterback, the rookie running back, Elliott. Overall number four pick. Picks up six yards to the 30. One yard line. The Bears are last in the league in time of possession. They've had the ball less than 24 minutes per game. And you flip that around, it means the defense has been on the field almost 36 minutes per game, and they're back on the field here quickly. But they have to take some responsibility for that as well. That was a long drive orchestrated by Dak Prescott, and so they're going to need to make some plays to get off the field on third down. First, they got to get to third down. Second and four. Easily comes into the slot. Right wide to the left. Elliott again. 
Sets up a third and one. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Des Bryant injured his right knee during the Cowboys' opening drive. Missed a couple of plays, then returned with a sleeve on that knee. But when the offense came to the bench, athletic trainers wrapped that knee to support and stabilize it. And obviously, he is able to be back out there, Al. All right, Michelle, we took a look at that play again. And then he started to limp off the field and then went down before he got to the bench. So it looked bad at first, but back in. Third down and one now from the 34-yard line. To the outside, Beasley. Beasley loves to go underneath, runs those short routes, crossing in those little out routes. And, and he and, and Prescott have really uh, found a great rhythm in the first three games. A little confidence maybe in a rookie quarterback. Third and one, you're going to go ahead and run it. They have a bit of a pick play on the outside. And Jason Witten just so savvy. He doesn't even make contact. Watch him. He's going to come across here, come up, and just sort of get in the way of Adrian Amos. Don't pick him. Don't do anything stupid. Just pick up the first down. Nicely done. Perfect start. Fourth, fourth, with 44 yards. With a touchdown on the ground. Good play fake, fires caught at the 40 of Chicago. That's taken in by Terrence Williams. So he's spreading it around. Jacoby Glenn makes the tackle. He's now five out of five, and he's just four different guys. One of the problems when you can do this play action fake and you've had success running the ball, those linebackers come up, and there's just no help in that underneath coverage. There's no way they can do anything but play the run in that situation. And for Terrence Williams, that was... First catch, he didn't even get a ball thrown at him a week ago. Tony Romo hopeful of getting back around the middle of the season from the 40. Big hole exploited. Elliott, 12-yard gain. Freeman finally makes the stop. It's a first down at the 28-yard line. There's the inside zone and the patience. Watch and then hit the hole once he sees it. Let those linemen develop. You've got three pro bowlers in front of you. Give them a little time. Let them go make their blocks and then take off and give it a shot. He's so young, just 21 years old. He's already done a couple of silly things early in his career here, but a guy that's a lot of fun. We were talking to Dak Prescott, says he dances around and sings all the time in the locker room. Fun loving young man. They split him out wide to the right. Prescott dancing around the pocket. Rolling against the grain, throws, flag down, that's incomplete. Tended there for one of the tight ends, Jeff Swain. Holding, holding, offense, number 79, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. Well, with Tyron Smith inactive tonight, that's Chaz Green who takes his spot, second-year guy out of Florida. And obviously he's going to come back and make the set, but then... You're going to get a loop around on the part of Leonard Floyd, and then he's going to hook him around the neck. And there are too many officials standing in the backfield now to miss that. So now for the Bears, an opportunity defensively. Now they're just going to have to play a little pass defense. The secondary short of at least two guys who would be on the field at this point. And Alfred Morris, the former Redskin, is in the game. And he is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Freeman. So, you know, in the, in the draft last year, obviously you're talking about Goff, talking about Wench, you're talking about Lynch, who will go in the first round. By the way, how's uh, Philadelphia doing with their rookie so far? And then this guy drops all the way to the fourth round, which is about where he figured to go. And the Cowboys wind up with him, and he winds up as their opening night starter. Look at him running the show out there. That's what's been so impressive to me. Second and 19. And that's caught by Witten to the 31. You know, Chris, you look at the guy, and, you know, we watched them on television, first time we've seen him live, and you say, wait a minute, that's, that's not a rookie. No, it's not. And, and I, I watched him all the way through preseason because he came out and had that great first game. You know, I said, well, let me put on a little film here and watch this guy. And remember, in college, he basically played his whole college career from shotgun. So they were talking to Jason Garrett about it. And he said the first few days we had him under center, it wasn't exactly a thing of beauty. He said, don't worry about it, coach. I'll get it. I'll get it. And he came back the next day, and he was better. And the next day he was better. 
And every day you can see these teammates looking at him as the leader of this offense. And now he's in the gun and the blitz is coming. They pick it up and he goes deep down field and it is broken up. Bryce Butler, the intended receiver, and Jacoby Glenn was back there covering on the play. Butler is 6'3", and Glenn about 5'11". This little Jacoby Glenn has played really well so far. Watch him time this one up. We may have gotten there just a little bit early, but they're going to call that one enough incidental contact. As a receiver, I would say that should have been a foul. Well, and the crowd agrees with you. They boo. But Dan Bailey now comes in. This will be a 49-yard attempt. And Bailey Chase. bangs it right down the middle, as he almost always does. 154 left in the period. 10 to nothing, Cowboys. From the creators of Supernatural and The Shield, one team must defend the past to save our future. Timeless premieres Monday, October the 3rd on NBC. Downtown Dallas, Texas. On this final Sunday night of the month of September. Where Dallas is growing in all directions, isn't it? Every time we come here, there's new roads and interchanges. All directions. The Metroplex. Pretty good year for him. The Texas Rangers doing extremely well. Dallas Stars look good last year. Mavericks. Cowboys trying to go to two and one here. They fielded in the end zone and Deontay Thompson downs it there. Let's take a look at the Cowboy defense. Tom Crawford, Boise State. Malik Collins, Nebraska. Terrell McClain, South Florida. Jack Crawford, Penn State. Anthony Hitchens. Iowa. Sean Lee, Penn State. Brandon Carr, Grand Valley State. Barry Church, Toledo. Byron Jones, UConn. Morris Claiborne, LSU. Anthony Brown, Purdue University. And Ron Marinelli, major domo of the defense. Wants to make sure his guys don't get loafs when they look at the film. You don't go to the ball, you get a loaf. Throws, and that's a five-yard gain over the middle, hitting Zach Miller, making it second down and five. So Brian Hoyer's been around. He started in New England, and he was an understudy, of course, to Tom Brady there. Then he went to Arizona very briefly, was the starter in Cleveland in 14, was the starter last year for the majority of the season in Houston, had a terrible playoff game. They let him go, brought in Osweiler, and then to Chicago. He also spent a cup of coffee in Pittsburgh, even though he didn't get into a game. So he has been around. He got Johnny Manziel in Cleveland, didn't he? The, yes, he did. Second and four. It's Langford. Yeah, I mean, Cleveland actually, I think, had a winning record with him. And then, of course, yeah. everybody wanted Manziel to play. And Manziel came in, and that ended uh, <laughs> a couple of careers. At least Johnny has a chance to come back. Jay Cutler, of course, the Chicago quarterback, the sprained thumb. He's week to week as it wrapped here. They brought in Matt Barkley as the backup quarterback. He's been around with Philadelphia and with Arizona in training camp, so he would be their number two tonight. Basically just could not grip the football. Third and two, final minute. They bunch three receivers to the right. They go five wide here. Cowboys rush forward. Pass has gotten away quickly and broken up. Barry Church with the big hit on Langford. Probably wouldn't have had the first down anyway. And the Chicago Bears with another three and out. Well, you'd think it's set up for a little bit of a pick play out here, but you're going to see Barry Church come up and hit him just as he's making contact with the football. And Church, you can just see his confidence continue to grow. He's very good down around the line of scrimmage, making tackles, getting in the backfield. He's starting to make some plays on the back end this year. This is O'Donnell's second punt. Lucky Whitehead says I'll fair catch it and does at the 27-yard line. 20 ticks remaining in the opening quarter in Texas. 10-0. Dallas. Michelle Tafoya with you back in Dallas. Well, Ezekiel Elliott's two fumbles last week had to be disheartening as the Cowboys emphasized ball security all throughout training camp. And one of the things they used during drills was this tool. It's a football where when you hold it correctly, high and tight, it makes this sound. 
So the idea is to make the football make this sound. Or as Jason Garrett said, make that football sing. It is classic Pavlovian <laughs> conditioning, Al. Michelle, you are now trending on everything. I love that. Can we do that again? In the but of course, course, go to YouTube. Yeah, awesome. Got nine million hits already. <laughs> on first down, that pass incomplete, intended for Jeff Swaim and Freeman covering on the play. And here's what Michelle was talking about. Yeah, laid it on the ground a couple of times last week, but now look at him. He's holding it up higher. He's got it pressed. When you start to see any air at all in between the ball and his body, that's when coaches get nervous. Not a fumbler at Ohio State, though, by any means. He really did a nice job. Just had a couple get away last week. And Alfred Morris in the backfield, former Washington Redskin. Second and ten. Morris. He had some phenomenal days against Dallas, so if you can't beat him, join him. They signed him. Into the quarter. With the score, the Dallas Cowboys 10 and the Chicago Bears nothing. Sunday Night Football continues after these messages. Yeah, I saw some uh, sad news about Arnold Palmer and Golf Channel NBC Sports through Alistair Johnson, the longtime business associate CEO of Palmer Enterprises, that Arnold Palmer has passed away at the age of 87 late this afternoon. Mike Tarico will uh, take a look at Arnold's career at halftime. Just one of the classiest, most genuine men I've ever met. Uh, great sports. Start the second quarter here with Prescott. Dancing away, escaping down the sideline he goes. Man, oh man! Chris talked about how excited this area is about this kid, and you can see it already in a quarter and one play, 17-yard game. Well, Willie Young's going to take a little inside path here, and eventually Dak is going to figure that out and then take off. He's a guy in college that, even though he was able to make a lot of yardage running. He didn't run much. He learned to go through his progressions. And that's what impressed the Cowboys coaches, the fact that he wasn't a run-first college quarterback. At the 48-yard line. Play fake, pressure on, and he gets it away and completes it. For very little yardage, if any. Morris making the catch there. The Dallas Cowboys have now run 22 plays, and the Bears have run six. And in case you're wondering, uh, Alfred Morris, the plan is that they're going to bring him in about the third series of every game and just let Ezekiel Elliott breathe a little bit. He's a very excitable young man, and they feel like that they didn't want to see that uh, shield on his face mask get all fogged up like it did in his first game. So they're just going to give him a chance to catch his breath and let Morris play. Five wide on a second and eight. He surveys and he hits Beasley, and Beasley is run out of bounds at just about the first down marker. You know, they're throwing everything at him. They're bringing corner blitzes, and he just stands there. That The thing that's impressed me, I think, the most is just watching him stand in the pocket. Most rookie quarterbacks are inert. Look at this guy. It's like Tom Brady or somebody standing in there. And then this short, tight motion, you can see him scanning the field. Beasley, probably a second or third look on that play. He just is so poised. And he loves going to Beasley. The three catches were Beasley tonight and 16 already in a little bit more than nine quarters this season. Morris. And the threat is way inside the 35 to the 33. It's a nice one-two punch when you get Elliott and Morris coming at you. Yeah, it really is. But you've got to talk about this offensive line as well. These guys, when you're talking about being pro bowlers across the board, but right in here, just so much the strength. Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Lyle Collins, he's got a lot to learn on pass protection, but he is a devastating run blocker. And if they can attack you up the middle of your defense, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Second down and five. And we give it to the former Redskin again, who gets to the 30 yard line. Morris sets up a third and a deuce 
Nice play that time by Nick Kwiatkowski, who's getting his first start tonight. An interesting story. He was at West Virginia, came in as a safety and a wide receiver. There he is, number 44. Gained 48 pounds and became the leading tackler at linebacker three straight years at West Virginia. Now here he is starting for the Chicago Bears. Lamar used it as on injured reserve. They'll miss him. Have to have a, a patchwork group in there. That linebacker Beasley sets up in the slot to the left. Uh -oh. Prescott looks that way. Beasley gets free. And Beasley <laughs> thinks he has a touchdown, but the official says first and goal. Poor Dak Prescott. He's left two inside the one yard line. He's looking for that first touchdown pass, and he just can't get it. That's the first time in Beasley's career. He's caught a pass more than 20 yards downfield. And look at what Jason Witten did again. The last time the cornerback had to bounce over the top of Jason Witten, this time he forces him underneath and he can't catch up with Cole Beasley. That's There's Witten right there, just a little inside move, went over the top, forced the corner underneath, and created the space. Now it's Dunbar, the number three back, and Dunbar is in for the touchdown. Look out. Well, think about it. On that first drive, it looked like they might have lost Bryant. It looked like they might have lost Beasley. They get them both back. They have now picked up 201 yards to Chicago's 19 and are an extra point away from 17 zip. And you can tell, Al, when the offensive linemen start feeling it a little bit about a quarterback, you know, when they start saying, if we get this running game going, and he can go to his strength, which is play action passing. It just motivates them any, even more. There's some energy right now with this Dallas Cowboys organization. And you feel it in the building. Bailey for the point after. So in Beasley's five year career, he never caught a pass more than 20 yards beyond the line of scrimmage until now. Sets up the touchdown. Dunbar in for the score 17 0. Aerial coverage tonight being brought to you by Geico. Looking at the downtown Dallas. It's a, a neat thing right there. The Peacock, SNF, and all kinds of stuff down there. Union Center, Nick and Sam's. You never know where you're liable to run into when you get to downtown Dallas, Texas. The epicenter of Dallas. <laughs> now, Michael's Chris Collins. We're at Michelle Tafoya. Sunday night football, 17 to nothing. All Cowboys so far. So the Chicago Bears. Losing their opener to Houston, even though they played well in the first half. Routed last week by Philadelphia, and now in arrears by 17. And down to the end zone there. So Cole Beasley coming out of the slot for the most part. 149 catches, 10 yards or less. That's 93% of his catches, so you know where he likes to work. Underneath. He only caught 10 in his career between 11 and 20 and then bingo right there number one you know he kind of reminds me of one of those New England receivers right you know Danny Amendola Julian Edelman where quickness over speed becomes paramount even where's Edelman's number and there's a big run here for Jordan Howard the rookie taking over for Langford and he comes out of the backfield with a big run here to try to give Chicago a spark that they desperately need. That's 37 yards for Howard. Come with a little blitz that time with Justin Durant, so there's nobody to support over the top here, and Howard's just going to hit a seam and go. And I don't think it's going to be very long at all before Jordan Howard is the featured back here. I just saw him do too much in college to believe anything otherwise. Started at Alabama, Birmingham, and... They stopped the program. Picture up for about a yard here. And this is you know, Chicago's going to need. Well, who knows what they're going to need, Chris? I mean, they got so many things right now. A lot of injuries on defense. You got the whole Cutler thing. He's got a contract that they have to think about picking up or not picking up next year. You got a running back situation. They like Langford last year, but maybe this is the kid of the future. Yeah, he is. And the one thing that Howard can do is make people miss. One guy does not get him on the ground very often. Where Langford, that's not really his strength, breaking tackles or making moves on people. And instead of a screen, and this is Jeffrey, and he'll thread his way for a first down and a lot more, taking it to the 16-yard line. You know, we're thinking about 
the identity of the Chicago Bears. Maybe this is the identity right now. Maybe you get Howard, Jeffrey, if, if he's healthy. And, you know, they, what would you say is the identity of the Bears right now overall? Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, really, I, I, I don't know. You can't say anything about the defense because we haven't had a chance to see them yet you know, in force all together. And offensively, what are they? They're, you know, they're sort of a team that likes to take it and throw it down the field to Jeffrey and under the ball on the snap sometimes. Yeah, but Hoyer is able to pick it up. When you think about the tradition of the Bears, of course, they're the monsters in the midway. Walter Payton, obviously, Gil Sayers. And then you go to the, the great defense with Butkus and Singletary and through the years. And right now, it's, it's very much a team in transition because there's a, a new general manager in Ryan Pace came in last year. Virginia McCaskey, uh, uh, George Hallis, of course, uh, founded the team. And it's the McCaskey Hallis family, and they brought in Ryan Pace. Pace brought in John Fox. But there's been a big, big change and makeover of this team over the past couple of years. And then Hoyer just uh, flings that one out of bounds well and you know it's been mix and match for the bears here all of a sudden uh, Hernandez grasso is going to be the center and then he got hurt they get josh Sitton from the green bay packers and all of a sudden now they move cody whitehair over they bring josh Sitton in and crawford comes around and makes a play there but this is a team that is sort of getting built as the season gets started and you're not going to be able to beat many NFL teams mixing and matching on opening day. Third and 11. And Hoyer will flip it to the outside. And a nice by Claiborne against Eddie Royal, stopping them well short of the first down. And they'll have to settle for a three point attempt. And for Mo Claiborne, the beat continues. He's a young man who has had so many injuries in his career. You never got to see him as that top 10 pick that he was coming out of college. But his confidence seems to be growing every week as he continues now to make plays. So the new kicker, Connor Barth, who missed an attempt last week from 31 again. Robbie Gold was making too much money, and out he went. And you got a flag here. Before what would be a 29-yard attempt. That too much money disease got a couple of them, didn't it? Yep. Matt Forte, Martellus Bennett, Robbie Gold. Fourth and five. The naked eye looks like a little bit like five and a quarter. So even if it's against Dallas, I'm not sure it's a first down. Let's see. Craig Rolstead having a, uh, a long sidebar here with the boys. And here comes the verdict. Ball start, offense, number 48. Abrupt movement of his hand off the ball. That's a five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. That is the snapper. See his kicks. right hand. He's going to go whatever, scratch his ankle. And yep. that's going to be a foul. And a lot of times it depends on how abrupt that movement is. Now, they did get a little flinch off the defensive left side so maybe that's the reason they ended up with a call on the Bears. 34 yard attempt for Barth who had some pretty good seasons at Tampa and his first points as a Bear come right here with 747 to go in the half. This coming Thursday night football on the NFL Network there is your kickoff time it is the Miami Dolphins they pulled out a win today in overtime against Cleveland against the Bengals and all of a sudden they're now in a position where they kind of need a win because they've started one and two losing today to Denver that's on Thursday. Now you got an onside kick attempt has to go 10 yards the Cowboys were there. And the Bears at the 46 yard line but it's going to be Sherrick McManus. And there's a flag down on the play. First of all, the kick has to go 10 yards before the kicking team can touch it. That's number one. I think it did that. So who they touched did it? recover. Bears could have been offside here. 
Don't know. Somebody's going to touch it. Yeah. Kickers, number 58. Mm -hmm. It's a five yard penalty. We'll re kick. That's Jonathan Anderson. So they set it up. Here it is in the second guy from the kicker. This side, 58. Boy, they had it. That was such a great move there by John Fox. They recovered the ball. They're going to get some momentum. And as often happens, sometimes that kicker, just as he gets to the ball, slows to sort of get that uh, final step set. And guys run right by him. He's right at the bottom of your screen here. Very close. Gutsy recovery there by Sherrick McManus to go in there and get that ball. And all for not, but at least they're yeah. not giving the Cowboys the ball right there. And there is McManus. So Jason Whitman, the offense, ready to come back on the field. They've already picked up. 201 yards tonight. They have 13 first downs and the Bears have two. Halfway through the second quarter. Taken to the two yard line. Lucky Whitehead. And Whitehead comes up to the 26 yard line. You know, Chris, there was little doubt that the Cowboys needed to think ahead, to think ahead to drafting a quarterback. I mean, a little skirmish here that amounts to next to nothing. And with Romo, of course, Romo fractured his collarbone twice last year. There is the backup quarterback right now, Mark Sanchez, talking to Tony. Tony, not on IR, but they had to think about somebody. So they even thought about, you know, in the first round, they had the number four pick. They could have right. picked the quarterback there, but they, they chose Elliott. Well, and they were considering moving up in the draft in the same way that Philadelphia did to get Carson Wentz. They went out and worked Jared Goff and Paxton Lynch. And even in the fourth round, they were really looking more at Connor Cook as being the guy that they might take. And all of a sudden, the Raiders jump up in front of them, so they have to settle for this Dak Prescott guy who's coming here and, and look like Roger Stallback. Right. It's a four-yard gain. Eighth quarterback selected. Now, we don't want to stir the pot, but you always stir the pot. You know what's going to happen, right? If, if Prescott plays sure. really well and Tony gets really healthy, you tell me. Well, I mean, the conversation about a quarterback controversy has already started. You don't have to have any more than... You know, one good game to get that thing started. But this is a young man that gives the Cowboys hope. And I think after last season, the Cowboys fans were just a wreck. They were like, oh, my gosh, you know, if Tony Romo, then the backup quarterback got hurt this year. And they're down to this four-string, uh, fourth-round draft pick. And look at what he's done. <laughs> he keeps doing it tonight. Terrence Williams tackled by Glenn. We go to Michelle. Well, Al, I spoke with Tony Romo before the game. He was in good spirits, and he said his rehab is progressing. He was able to work out this week, including upper and lower body work in the weight room, doing some cardio on the elliptical. He says there is no pain, and it's interesting. He said he's setting no timetable for return. He's just listening to the doctors, scheduled to have another MRI in about a week, Al. And there he is, Michelle, at the age of 36. Had a really good year when the Cowboys were 12 and 4 two years ago. Last year was a washout. And fighting his way, trying to get a little yardage here is Elliott tackled by Sutton. And they around here they'll tell you that Tony Romo went in the cave for a couple of days. You know, he worked so hard to get himself back right, was so excited to lead the Cowboys again and you know, you always, anytime you're hurt in a game of football, you feel like you've let your teammates down, and then to get back in that Seattle game and they get dragged down from behind and another back injury, you know, would send anybody into a few days of depression. And those numbers tell the story, and in first downs, it's 14 to 2. Cowboys with a fake flip. And Prescott surveying, fires downfield, and caught by Terrence Williams. At the 42-yard line, and that moves the sticks. 
He had an easy throw in the flat, but he wanted more. We're starting to see Prescott look down the field more. He knew he had to deal with the rusher coming from behind, but look at that throw on the run. He has a way now of sort of calmly just surveying the field. He had a great feel for what was happening behind him, knew he could always run the ball. But now in this game, Scott Linehan, I think, is convincing him, hey, take a look down the field. Don't always settle for those check downs. And he's making some big plays. 42-yard line. Number five to play in the half, Elliott. And Elliott bouncing his way for a gain of seven yards. Out of Ohio State, Ezekiel Elliott. Now, this is getting pretty good. Uh, it's getting pretty good. Now, Ezekiel Elliott in the first game sprinted every time he got the ball. Now we're starting to see him understand those zone reads, those outside zones. Let those offensive linemen sort of synchronize swimming, get out in front of you, and then when you find the hole, go attack it hard. This young man can fly. He is one of the fastest high schoolers to ever come out of the state of Ohio. And he wasn't breaking tackles in the first two games, but he has tonight. And he fights his way very close to a first down just uh, outside the 31-yard line. You know, the other guy that I've been impressed with early in this season has been their tight end, Jeff Swaim, number 87. You know, Jason Witten's always been a pretty good blocker. Maybe he's faded a little bit here in the last year or two, but Jeff Swaim has really taken over for Gavin Escobar, who is a little bit more of a receiver, and added a little physical element on the outside, and it showed up there. At the 32-yard line. Three and a half to go in the half. Cowboys up by two touchdowns. Warren, Warren, two. Prescott dancing, throwing. Beasley makes the catch, dives for a first down. Let's see where they spot it, maybe a little bit short of it. And we're talking about Nick Kwiatkowski. Watch this. He's going to take Lyle Collins and drive him straight back, and it's going to be up to Ezekiel Elliott to come clean it up. You take Lyle Collins and knock him on his back. You are some kind of man. Kwiatkowski there with a shot, and then Collins saved by Ezekiel Elliott. Look at this. Oh, man. Rocky Graciano there with a six-inch punch. Second and one to the outside. And climbing for that first down this time is Ezekiel Elliott. That is already his 12th carry of the game and he's picked up 70 yards on the ground. You know, Al, one of the things that I never get overly impressed with are speed backs coming out of college into the NFL because the hash marks are so much wider in college football. You have a longer way to get to the boundaries, so more chance to use your speed. But what we've seen out of Elliott so far is that his speed is showing up in an NFL game. He's still able to turn the corner on some of these runs, and he's unafraid to put his head down and play between the tackles either. And they get it off just before the two-minute warning. The protection, but it's tipped. Pass is incomplete, and that takes us to the two-minute warning, coming with 154 to go in the half. 17-3, Cowboys. Toyota halftime, Mike Tarico's here, looking back upon the life of the great Arnold Palmer who passed away today. Dan, Tony, and Rodney will assess the first half, and Dan takes a look ahead to the Thursday night game, which is Miami at Cincinnati. 90 passes in his career to this point without a TD or interception, longest streak. Beginning a career in history, and He's going to run it again, and he's going to take it inside the 10 and get tackled at about the 8-yard line, setting up a first and goal. This is what's so dangerous. Anytime you have a mobile quarterback, you empty the backfield. You only have one middle linebacker in the middle of the field. So if all of a sudden Jarrell Freeman starts to move one way or another, there is literally no one left out there to stop Dak Prescott. And I'll bet you in college he probably puts his head down and tries to score. Trying to stay alive out there with Tony Romo's injury. Mississippi State. Well, number one in the country. Yeah, at one point. To the outside. To the four-yard line goes Ezekiel Elliott with a flag down. Adrian Amos making the tackle. Flag down at the six. 
like he might get a hold that time on Jason Witten trying to get position on the outside. Couldn't quite get it and grab the jersey. There's Jason right there. Eves dropping. I like how they, they use a sacrificial official to talk to Jason there. After discussion, there's no holding on the play. Second down. Pretty good. Yeah, you don't want the maybe one guy saw it one way and the other guy saw it the other way and I'd agree with the fact that I think they got it right. Sometimes you get it right when you get the benefit of the doubt, don't you? You know, sometimes you get it in the NBA too. I'll just uh, leave it at that. You name the sport, you're going to get it. <laughs> Strike zone, hockey, you name it. Basketball, you're around for a while, but you will get the benefit of the doubt from time to time. Here we go, empty backfield again. So you've got to think Prescott running. Here comes Morris back in now. Second down and goal. Give it to Morris, and he's going to take it to the end zone. Touchdown. And then he hits it out of the park as he did in Washington those many years, and last week as well when he had the game winning touchdown. Draw up any of these pro bowlers you want, but here goes Zach Martin right there. Watch him get a contact and come get to the second level. That's what makes great players. That's why you go to Pro Bowls. Hicks was even trying to grab the back of his jersey, but he let his man in from the on deck circle and the stroke went out of him. She is gone. Jason Garrett said he's so happy to see him do it for his team for a little while. Saw too many of them when he played for Washington. Bailey for the point after Dallas with 274 total yards they have 19 first downs in the half 38 ticks remaining in the half and it's 24 to 3. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Chevrolet the most awarded car company two years in a row by Energizer still going by Subway restaurants and by Verizon. Welcome to Verizon LTE Advance, the next gen network. Cowboys and Bears encourage area kids to get up and play 60 and visits this week. Yeah, go play 60, then put your mask on and have some fun, play video games after that, do whatever you want. <laughs> the life of a kid is he's fielded in the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. NASCAR drivers have one last chance to advance to the round of 12 as they race the Monster Mile in Dover this next Sunday at 1.30 Eastern Time on NBCSN. Well, Ryan Pace, the GM, second year with Chicago. They made the change there. He brought in John Fox, and right now they're six and twelve over the two seasons, and down by twenty-one here. And the pass is caught by Zach Miller. Gets it out to the thirty-one. Chicago undergoing a lot of changes for years. They had Jerry Angelo and he had Lovey Smith all those years. They had some success. Got to a Super Bowl once, but didn't win it. Then they brought in Phil Emery and they brought in uh, Mark Tressman, and now the new group. NFL plays sixty. The NFL's movement for a more active generation encourages fans to get moving and play for 60 minutes every day. Play 60 movement and NFL.com slash play 60. I think Bears fans would agree they'd like to see somebody play 60. Oh boy. They've had a couple of good halves, but that's been about it so far this season. Yeah, they played a decent first half against Houston, bad second half. Looked okay, sort of, in the first half against Philly of the night. Horrible second half. And tonight, a pretty dreadful first 30 minutes as Boyer throws. And Miller again, and Church will corral him at the 40 yard line. And Chicago will take another timeout, and we will take it to Michelle. Well, the Bears' already depleted defense has another concern right now as safety Harold Jones Corte has gone back into the locker room for the concussion protocol. Al, we'll see if he comes back after halftime. Uh, Michelle, a full mash unit coming into the game with the losses from last week and that IR list and inactive list 
building, building up with some key names, too. But, you know, they, they really had it set up the right way when you think about it. They were going to have really four pass rushers to talk about on the outside, two really fast inside backers, Kyle Fuller, first-round draft pick, and they're just all gone, you know, and it's, you're playing professional football. It's hard to just piece something together. Well, they're throwing and getting out of bounds. A short gain is Jordan Howard. Last year, the Bears in the first round went for Kevin White, the wideout from West Virginia, but then he got hurt before the season even started. He was gone for the year, and tonight he's been held in check, but they're hopeful that the, down the line he can pair up with Alshon Jeffrey to give him a, a pair of outstanding wideouts. Yet to happen. You know, this guy ran a 4-3-5 and did 23 bench presses with 225 pounds. He is a physical stud, there's no question. I have not seen the pop that I saw at West Virginia yet in the NFL level, but, you know, he was off a long time, so we'll see. Boyer now throwing, and that gets him into Dallas territory. Miller again, 43-yard line. Still outside of field goal range, and they stop the clock here with 10 seconds. Here's a look at Kevin White back at West Virginia, and he played against some of the very best competition there was. Was great with his hands. People would try and get their hands on him, and you'd see him just fight them off of them and make big plays and just out-jump people. Here playing against Alabama. Look at the hand fighting going and then just go up and get the football. So very talented guy. Obviously would be a great mix with Alshon Jeffrey. Two of those big guys on the outside being able to go up and over. But so many first downs are out of the building now when you think about it. Matt Forte playing for the Jets. Martellus Bennett playing with the Patriots. Brandon Marshall with the Jets. A lot of guys with a lot of talent as they try to remake this roster and go much younger and much cheaper. That's Chicago, and they get movement. That's Alshon Jeffrey who started early, and that's going to cost them five. So they're going to need about 15 more yards to get in some semblance of field goal range and get out of bounds because they don't have a timeout. Ball start, offense, number 65, five-yard penalty, first down. It's the rookie, Cody Whitehair. Who has played center all of about, what, three weeks, something like that well. in his career. Played a little bit, I guess, in preseason. They've already had a couple issues with snaps, but you have to give him a lot of credit making a late move to a position he's never played before and really has played pretty well in there. Cowboys have three defenders standing back at the 10-yard line. And it's thrown out of bounds by plenty. So now you've got five seconds and the time for one prayer. Take a look at Kevin White on the outside and see all the moves. There's a pretty sharp cut, but you're just not going to give up those deep jump balls that have sort of become the hallmark of Alshon Jeffrey in this offense. And so now you probably get the ultimate jump ball. You get those two big monsters on the same side, Jeffrey and Kevin White over there, and see if they can jump up and catch one for a cheap touchdown. Cowboys send only three, eight back. Hoyer buying time. That one right. Flings it. No, it's not even going to be close, and that's going to be the end of a first half. That's all Cowboys. Bears will get the second half kickoff. The score is 24-3. to three. Next up, they're at a halftime after these messages from your NBC station. Tonight's first half highlights are brought to you by Chevrolet. It's a sneak. And he paid a price for that one. Dak Prescott continues to impress. Then Beasley <laughs> thinks he has a touchdown, but the official says first and goal. He's left two inside the one-yard line. Dunbar is in for the touchdown. There's some energy right now with this Dallas Cowboys organization. Chevrolet, the most awarded car company two years in a row. A lot of energy comes from leading at halftime, 24 to three. Dallas has scored on all four of its possessions. Clearly they have dominated in terms of plays, in terms of time of possession by over two to one. First Cowboys quarterback with a TD run in a consecutive game since Roger Staubach did it 
in 77. Elliott, big first half. 76 yards on the ground. Beasley with five catches. And the first time in his five-year career, he's caught one more than 20 yards downfield. So it's been all Dallas as they try to go to 2-1. and one. And Chicago with a big mountain to climb to avoid going to 0-3. Chicago will get the ball. Dan Bailey will put it into the air. And a run back from the two-yard line here by Deontay Thompson. Who brings it back out to the 25 and loses the ball. So Thompson fumbles. And was he touched down? And I think the answer is going to be yes. First down, Chicago. Yeah. There was a diving tackle. I couldn't see exactly who it was. He dived. It was a little bit before that. It looked like it was Wilson mm -hmm. that dove out there in Damian Wilson and able to trip him up and so if he had not been touched there you can see right there there's the right hand on the pad and that's going to bring him down otherwise if you go to the ground on your own you lose the ball it's a fumble play ends the minute his knee touched so they start from the 24 and they have the rookie jordan howard in the game he had that big run in the first half but nothing doing here i think there are enough white shirts there led by sean lee and we check in with michelle well, John Fox was in a, hurry, in a hurry to get to the locker room at halftime, Al. He said the first thing we've got to work on is defense. I know we have a lot of new faces out there, but he said he wasn't sure that was the problem. Part of the problem is Dallas's two rookies. Jason Garrett liked what he saw in the first half. He said Ezekiel Elliott is running tough, and Dak Prescott is making plays in the pocket and with his feet, Al. Yep. Michelle Garrett pleased with everything as any coach would be with a 21-point lead, playing extremely well on both sides of the ball. And trying to win a game in its own building for the first time since early September last year. And that's caught here by White, who stays in bounds and then pays the price. Rod Marinelli loves when everybody swarms to the ball, as they do right there. It'll be third down and six. Yeah, and they've made some changes on, on this defense uh, for Rod Marinelli. They've flipped Tyrone Crawford out to the defensive end. Jack Crawford on the other side. Terrell McLean, who probably has played better than anybody on that front defensive line, number 97, has played so well in there. And they elevate the rookie Malik Collins to a starting position. And we all know about Sean Lee, the pro bowler on this defense. And other than Luke Keekley, who's in another universe in pass defense, He's one of the best there is at the linebacker position in coverage. On a third and five now, and Hoyer throws, and that's uh, almost caught, but not caught, by Kevin White, who reached for it, couldn't hang on, and comes back to the sideline here, fourth down. That was a great effort by Kevin White. He trying to lay out, sort of had it, came down, and then when Claiborne hit him it came out and so for Claiborne the good news keeps flowing McDonald's punt Whitehead is back there catches it in traffic at the 29 and advances it back to the 33 Prescott and company going back to work up by 21 points well the rookie Prescott has now thrown 90 career passes without an interception the record for that before your first career interception Tom Brady threw 162. Then you go to Dan Marino, he only threw 26. Aaron Rodgers threw nine before he was picked. Peyton Manning had his seventh pass picked off. Red Farm zero. <laughs> his first pass was picked off, and, and then his first completion was to himself. How'd that career turn out? Uh, how strange is it to see him in an Atlanta Falcons uniform? Right. <laughs> Elliott goes nowhere. Well, Commons is out of the game with a foot sprain. Ronald Leary comes in at left guard. And second down and 11. They're running a lot of people in and out for the Cowboys on offense. They're throwing a lot of formations, and Prescott seems to be able to handle everything. Hey, everybody, Arizona! Arizona! Got this figured out? Yeah, hey everybody, Arizona. It's his Omaha. And second with the left. Over the middle, Terrence Williams off to the races. 
inside the 30, drops the ball, and loses the ball, and the Bears are there, and the Bears come up with the ball at the 17-yard line. Adrian Amos is going to come back the other way and get bounced out of bounds. So Williams with a long reception and a long gain for about 50 yards and then coughs it up and Chicago gets it back on the turnover. So much for that stuff. He hasn't completed any balls coming into this game at 20 yards or deeper. A couple of them at least. And then we're going to end up with a fumble out of there. Jacoby Glenn calls that and then a roller derby breaks out after that. Glenn's the one that got beat, but he came back and made up for it and got the ball back for his offense. It's the first time the Cowboys have not scored on a possession tonight. So the 50-yard gain results eventually in a turnover. Boyer now on a tight roll, fires over the middle and too high. And incomplete intended for Alshon Jeffrey with a sprained knee and was limited in practice this week. Second down and 10. It's just so hard to come in and try and make something work. There's Terrence Williams. You know you're having a good night on offense when people are even congratulating you for fumbling the ball. <laughs> come on, it just I think they're, they're, people are just ecstatic in this stadium right now. They're like, oh my gosh, we have a quarterback and we have a running back and we're scoring points and our defense is holding the three points and we're going to win at home. This is awesome. It was eight straight here. Jeffrey makes the catch and picks up a first down. Barry Church makes the stop. Jeffrey played his college ball in South Carolina. He's also a good basketball player in high school, fifth year in the league. He's been their key guy. And that's what we were talking about with Kevin White before. If they can get White going and he got Jeffrey going, and this guy, you throw him a jump ball, and most of the time he's going to come down with it. He's come down with 60% of the deep balls thrown to him so far this year. He's like a big rebounder, was offered several football basketball scholarships, which he had a smile about. Hoyer. But again, that. Dallas secondary does its work Get that clean pocket. Nobody was open. Carries the ball to the 47 yard line. Gained a three second and seven. All the way on the outside. Alshon Jeffrey was open, but a little pressure was unable to get it going. I'll tell you, Kevin White's made a couple of nice moves in this game tonight. These guys really aren't. This is going to sound insulting, and maybe I'm not trying to have it be that way. They're not really route runners. You know, they're they're the best route runner on this team is Eddie Royal. He's the guy that can get in and out of some cuts and some timing plays and different things, and that's really much more of what Brian Hoyer's game is all about. Second down and seven. And that is caught, and that's Langford. I started to say, Chris, also that you know, one of the guys they missed as a receiver is Matt Forte. Oh, no you know, I mean, he was not only a great runner, had a great career there, was making too much money for them. At a certain point, you got to let the guy go. But he also, you know, caught a ton of balls out of the backfield, obviously. You know, and for a guy like Hoyer, he would be the ultimate antidote right here. You know, give him a chance to just get some completions, get a couple things going on offense. And you never know. I mean, you know, Hoyer's just trying to get it figured out himself here. From the 37, and now you got Langford again. And with a stiff arm, Church makes the tackle, but not until he gets down to close to the 15-yard line to gain a 22. One of the things that Cody Whitehair does so well from the center position, one of the reasons they wanted to play him there was watch the cutoff. You're going to get sitting down the field to make a block as well. That's a really hard block to make for a center. A guy, he was an excellent tackle in college football, but had short arms, so they didn't think he was going to be able to play tackle in the NFL. Played him at guard, they got sitting, moved him to center, and all of a sudden he's doing really well there. Langford comes out after those two runs for the moment. Howard is in, the rookie. And Howard will get bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Byron Jones, the first to get to him, and we go to Michelle. Well, at Kansas State, Cody Whitehair played right tackle, left guard, and then left tackle for his final two years. He was drafted as a guard, but this preseason played center for the first time in his career. Took only 10 snaps, as you mentioned, Chris, but after Josh Sitton was signed, Whitehair got the news. He'd be the starting center. He told me he was stunned, then excited, especially with two Pro Bowl guards next to him, guys. And there he is. Ready to snap it out of the gun to Hoyer from the 14-yard line. And that is caught. That's Miller, and he's going to take the ball 
to about the five yard line going to the tight end Hitchens makes the tackle. This is kind of the new play in the league. We say it in Green Bay all the time. These guys aren't even going to look. They're just going to come down and block here and dump the ball out here and be able to. So there's really nobody to make the tackle because the guys aren't even looking for a pass. They're just going down and blocking. Dump it underneath. Got to get the ball out before those blocks are made, but well timed by the Bears. First and goal from the three yard line. Howard stays in the game in the backfield. A little over eight to play in the third. Takes the handoff and then just has to sling it away. It'll be second and goal. And Flayborn, who is down in the end zone for the moment. Take a look right here. Got picked off by his own guy, it looked like. That's what they do down there on the goal line. They run all those rub routes, and time Claiborne got it. Friendly fire, injury timeout. Well, next weekend it is the Ryder Cup, the United States and Europe. Golf Channel at 8.30 a.m. Friday, NBC over the weekend. Ryan Moore named today as the final player by Captain Davis Love. Meanwhile, second down and goal after Claiborne had to come to the bench. And that is Jordan Howard picking up a hard yard. And now Claiborne will come back into the game. Third and goal. He's going to have all these double teams happening right over here. And this is just power football coming through. And it was... Kyle Wilbur coming around the outside that actually made the play there, and so now a big third down. This point, the game is down by 21. I think they're going on fourth down if they have to. Hoyer throws, broken up. Byron Jones is there. And I suspect you got to go for it. You're down by 21, fourth down and goal. He got the ball at the two-yard line, and I'm not even thinking about a field goal here. How good is Byron Jones? This guy just keeps doing Look at all the traffic he has to work his way through. He's got to go around that guy, under that guy, and then get on the good side of Zach Miller to make that play. Just a fantastic play by that safety slash corner. It has just really made a name for himself in this league. Bears need it here to breathe some life into themselves on a fourth and goal to try to make it a two possession game and touchdown that is Zach Miller who just did get to the goal line before he was forced out for the moment forward progress nets the touchdown for Chicago <laughs> Zach Miller says you think you're faster than I am I bet you I'm more powerful watch him just drive Byron Jones right back into the end zone and then make a right hand turn that's all that was you get a big old tight end and you make him look bad to play before he's just going to overpower you into the end zone well done that time by zach miller so the chicago bears capitalizing here it is again he gets pushed back and then has the ball clearly at the goal line of course they review it as they do all scoring plays it should be confirmed in a moment barth into attempt an extra point to try to make it 24 to 10 and it all started after the Terrence Williams 50 yard reception when he fumbled gave it back and the Bears then go 63 yards in 11 plays and Barth makes it a 14 point game so the Bears breathing new life into the contest Glenn forcing the fumble and the Bears able to capitalize on it. 24 to 10 Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Southwest. Yes, to low fares with nothing to hide. That is transparency by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. By Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. And by Toyota. Let's go places. That was uh, Selena topping Lebanon Trail Thursday night at the Star. It's the indoor facility out at the Cowboys' new practice facility. In Frisco, there's Dan Mullen, who is the Mississippi State football coach. Wife Megan watching uh, his man, Mr. Prescott.
do his thing tonight for the third week in a row. Lucky Whitehead downs it in the end zone. Well, let's take a look at what Mr. Dak Prescott has done here. This, this delivery, pretty pure, straight up, over the top. You would expect the time of release to be pretty good, and it is, 0.37 seconds. About the fastest we've ever seen is around 0.3 period. And he's right there, but so good on the run. Yes, we've seen him run the football, but he can also throw it on the run. He has been almost perfect tonight. I can't think of really anything I'd say he's done wrong. Good numbers, as you saw, 13 out of 16. Off play action underneath. And that's Ezekiel Elliott. Man, you think back to that first drive tonight. Gets off to such a good start. Then it looks like Bryant's hurt. And the way it looked, you thought maybe he was done for the night. Then it looked like Beasley was hurt. But things working very well. But isn't it amazing that the Cowboys have not won a game here since opening night last year against the Giants? It, it really is. And, but when you get the quarterback position solved, I mean, it was really and truly a mess last year. <laughs> I mean, it was a mess. And to wave your magic wand and take a fourth round draft pick that maybe you weren't even really focused on going into the draft, and all of a sudden he's doing this? Amazing. To the 33, Elliott. Third and short upcoming. On Ryan, a little slow in getting up. Quarterbacks, fourth round or later starting the season opener as a rookie. Randy Hedberg in Tampa Bay's second year. Mike Pagel with Indy in 82. Chris Wenke with. Uh, the Panthers in 01. Kyle Orton, Rex Grossman had gotten hurt, so Orton had to start as a rookie, and he went 10 and 5. And then there's Prescott here. And that's Mitch Unrein, whose wife won a bronze medal in trap shooting at the Rio Olympic Games, and he needs the attention. Hey, hey, count on Jimmy, always to have some good guests, and among those popping by this week, Sam Jackson. He'll be there. Kate Hudson will be there as well. Sting will be there. The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon all this week on the National Broadcasting Company. Third down and two. After run Ryan had to go off, and this is Elliott fighting his way for, well, we'll see if it's a first down or not. It depends on the spot, as it always does. <laughs> well, it's scientific that right. way. Yeah. Wow, that was... That was some play by Christian Jones, 52, coming across the formation here to make that hit. Looked like he was going to make it. Hmm. And Freeman, well, bring him down. There's Unrun. They, they, they say he didn't make it, so it's fourth and inches. And they bring in Jones. It's his first punt of the game. And he's able to get that one away. Field at the 15 yard line, trying to come around the corner, take it down to the 24 yard line was Eddie Royal, and there's a flag down on the play, 51 yard kick for the moment, a nine yard return. Could have been a fake, was that a face mask at the tail end of it? Rod Smith was the guy who made the tackle. 45, there he is. Yep. During the return, personal foul, face mask. Kicking team. It's a 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. I got to tell you, that wasn't a bad face mask right there. As we were, they were running right at us, and it looked like he was about to turn the corner, and Eddie Royal returned one for a touchdown last week. 15 yards may have been a uh, gift for the Cowboys. Well, in the meantime, you got uh, the Bears who had been trailing by 21 now it's 14 now they have the ball at the 39 yard line who knows 506 left in the third you watch college football you know it's possible mm -hmm. 20. running back is Jordan Howard and the rookie will get wrapped up and slung down back of the line of scrimmage by Malik Collins that was some play right there Lee Collins right here is just going to go right by Cody Whitehair, get in the backfield, unable to make that reach that time. Some good young players out here, and I, I tell you, no matter how good they are coming in, Rod Marinelli makes them better. These guys play hard. Second down, 13. Four-man rush, pass 
underneath the fumble. And the Dallas Cowboys are going to come up with it. Cameron Meredith was the receiver, but not for long. Wilcox hit him. And the Dallas Cowboys are back in business. You always have to do is it a catch. Two feet down, make a football move of some kind. Turn it up the field. Let's take a look. Catch, turn. I think that is a fumble. J.J. Wilcox, great shot right on the ball. Tucked it away, no question. Yep. Review all turnovers, but this one will stand. Tyrone Crawford recovered it. Wilcox forced it. And Dallas has the ball at the Chicago 36. First time that Meredith's been targeted tonight. <laughs> Elliott again. Got tripped up. It still turns into about a six yard gain. Cornelius Washington got a hand on him. And Elliott has now carried the ball 17 times tonight for 89 yards. One of the amazing things about Ezekiel Elliott is this guy won four state championships in track within what, like two hours? <laughs> he won everything. Two, two and a half hours. He won two sprints, the 100 and 200. He won the 110 meter hurdles. And then in high school, they run the 300 meter hurdles. He won that too. State of Ohio is a big state to win all that. Second and three. And that's incomplete. Bryant had to turn around. It'll be third down. Take a look. You think he's a good football player? Maybe this is why. Strides over those hurdles like he does linebackers. Winning with ease. Four. Yeah, I guess so. Four state championships in two and a half hours. In a state known for fast guys. Elliot. Flanking Prescott in the backfield. It's third down and three. Prescott throws, and that's incomplete, intended for Bryant. So Bryant's been pretty silent since the first quarter tonight. Brzezinski with the tackle, and it's fourth down. Yeah, one of the few bad throws uh, that we've seen out of Prescott so far. He really did have a good look. Willie Young's going to apply a little more pressure. He's been getting some pressure all night. That throw clearly behind Des Bryant had a chance to convert that third down. And Dan Bailey will come in. Chris Jones to do the holding. 47 yards. And the kick this time is no good. So the Bears are able to stay within two possessions. A rare miss for Dan Bailey with three and a half to go in the third. It remains 24 to 10 Dallas. Ezekiel Elliott, who won four state championships in Missouri, not Ohio, but I'm sure he would have done very well in Ohio as well. Still a very impressive athlete who got it going, but right now the Chicago Bears have new life. I mean, this is clearly a ball game at this point if they can put together a drive. You're entitled. I have Lovey Smith coaching this team early in the in the game. It's wonderful. <laughs> Point on first down throws, and this is seven-yard pickup to Kevin White, and we go to Michelle. Well, running back Jeremy Langford was carted back to the locker room. There's nothing official from the Bears yet, but I can tell you the athletic training staff was doing an examination that really seemed to be focusing on his right Achilles. And the Bears came into this game without Kadeem Carey, so down a couple running backs, Al. Yeah, boy, it just it continues with these guys. And now they hand the ball off to Jordan Howard. And he'll get to the 42-yard line. First down. Well, John Fox in his second season. Only coach in the history of the league, succeeded by a couple of guys who faced each other in the Super Bowl. That was last year. Ron Rivera and Gary Kubiak. Buck Showalter, only manager in Major League Baseball history, succeeded by Bob Brenly with the Diamondbacks and Joe Torre with the Yankees in the 2001 World Series. So tough for those guys to sit at home and watch the guys who succeeded them face each other in either the World Series or the Super Bowl. But for Foxy, he's been to the Super Bowl twice. And the one thing about John, uh, he's been in demand, even when he got 
canned in Carolina. Denver picked them up right away, and then Denver let him go, and Chicago picked them up right away. He hasn't had a year off. Yeah, we asked him about Jay Cutler, and he said, hey, it's a performance-based business. That's the bottom line. Whoever's playing best gets to play quarterback. Second and ten. Hoyer. And getting ripped as he makes the catch. Brandon Carr putting a hit on Kevin White after no gain. You know, it's so interesting that the Cowboys decided to flip the sides these corners play. Forever, Mo Claiborne had played on the defensive left side, Brandon Carr on the other, and they flip-flopped around now. And now you've got Brandon Carr over here on the right side, and it seems to really have helped both of them. Brandon Carr got his first interception in the two, last three seasons now, really, because the two prior seasons, he didn't get any at all. Third and ten. Kevin White. So on third and long, they're on an underneath little slant to the inside, and Collins is right there, and it gains next to nothing, and it's fourth down. You know how they showed that blitz with two linebackers up inside, and that might even been a bit of an audible there. See, and when you get this look with these guys here, there's nobody to chase that kind of a play, and but they come out of it, and it really ended up not being a problem. So now Patrick O'Donnell sending it down to Cole Beasley. Goes down with Baxman. They can close to hit the board. And Beasley makes the fair catch at the 12 yard line with 37 seconds left in the third. Well, the Cowboys have had tremendous trouble at home, but so have the Bears. They've lost 11 of their last 12 home games, most over a dozen game span in the history of that fabled franchise. Cowboys beat the Giants here in a thriller on opening night, then lost seven straight and lost to the Giants on opening night here. And you go back to 88-89, which was the end of the Landry era and the beginning of the Jerry Jones, Jimmy Johnson era for a longer streak. But uh, right now, trying to get off that schneid up 24 to 10. And Chicago's had the ball for a little while in this half. From the 12. And it's Elliott knifing his way to the 17. He's on his way to 100 yard night Langford we're being told is now questionable with an ankle injury so they're down to two running backs including one guy who just uh, got activated and uh, Alshon Jeffrey just sitting on the bench as the Chicago Bears will go into the fourth quarter trailing 24 to 10 into the third and Sunday Night Football from Arlington, Texas, resumes after these messages. Aerial coverage tonight is being brought to you by GEICO. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoya. Sunday Night Football, Arlington, Texas. There's downtown Dallas. It's about a 30, 35-minute drive from AT&T Stadium. Start the fourth on a second and five, and Prescott fires complete for a first down up at the 29-yard line to Des Bryant, and that's only Bryant's second catch of the night for a total of 23 yards. Standings, Minnesota 3-0, and and then Chicago trying to avoid going to 0-3. Green Bay beat Detroit today, and Philadelphia 3-0. and The Giants lose a tough one to Washington, and Dallas trying to go to 2-1. and Man alive, if there's a Vote for coach of the year after three weeks. Mr. Mike Zimmer is going to get my. How about battle. Bill Belichick? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's every <laughs> too year. Bad either. That's every year. From the 29 yard line. Peterson. Uh, to the action. Look at that. Well, we talked about the you. hurdles. Yep, he won the 110 meter hurdles and the 300 hurdles, and here he wins the 14 yard hurdles. In perfect form. We've seen other guys hurdle, but this was the best form we've seen. There he comes. Check this out. And guys are going to go low at the knees, and then we already saw the film. There it is. We knew what he was going to do. Cleared with ease. A very exciting young player. An exciting young team at this point, you know? I mean, we're seeing some things out of the Dallas Cowboys we certainly didn't see a season ago. Krasinski said, where did that drone come from? <laughs> Gives him 108 yards on the night. Looking for more. Maybe one. We go back to that... Uh, 
the Missouri high school days when, I mean, he looked like Usain Bolt in, in the 100 in, in this race here. He won it by a mile. And then he won those four titles in a couple of hours plus 30 minutes. <laughs> Chris Brzezinski is now forever known as a hurdle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not Clint. Second down and nine. Early in the fourth. Prescott fully in command. To the outside to Beasley, and Beasley will come up a little bit short of the sticks. And that'll make a third down and one. McManus covering on the play. Yeah, I was talking to Scott Lenahan about coaching Dak Prescott, and I loved his line. He said he had great blood pressure for a quarterback. And that, that sort of describes what we're seeing out here, that you just don't ever get the feeling that his heart rate's gone over about 70 so far in this game. Looks so comfortable. And has his opening day. And in preseason, he had a great preseason. You know, and this is something that neither Elliott nor Prescott did in college. This I formation under center. Third and one. That will be a first down. Chucking his way to the 45-yard line is the workhorse, who has now carried the ball 21 times for 112 yards tonight. Let's give Chaz Green a little credit here. Watch the push he's going to get down and just move this entire pile. He's a guy who's given up a couple of pressures tonight on the outside, but to a pretty good player and really green who he's faced. Elliott once more. Cuts it back, takes it down to the 40-yard line. Will Sutton taking Betty Goldman's spot in the Defensive alignment makes the stop gain a five second and five. I thought Elliott had a chance to break a big play right there He went slow, but his, he just put his head down when he really should have made one more cut He had a chance with his speed to really pop one on that one Calvin Hill the record for a rookie first three games the great Calvin and Elliott has a shot at it A little too high. Terrence Williams over the middle, flagged down. Might be roughing the pass. Willie Young came in and delivered a blow. Willie Young with his helmet off, so maybe that Personal had something foul. to do. Roughing the passer, defense number 97. It's a 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. And I'm sure Willie Young saying, well, what about them taking my helmet off here? Here he comes right there without a helmet. Mm. And I think it's going to be more of that throw down. And Dak Prescott so young, he didn't even turn around and look for the flag. That'll move the ball to the 25-yard line. Prescott's going for 208 tonight. And the flag is down after a two-yard pickup by Elliott. Greg rolls that. Will give us the call. Shot clock. Offense number 79 has a 15-yard penalty. Replay. First down. And that's Chaz Green. He just gave him a little bit of love, and then he goes out and he commits the foul. That's only the third penalty against Dallas. Yep, you can't high low now. They're going to eliminate these blocks from the game. It's a good call right there. You're going to see a high block, and then you'll see Chaz Green go in low. Leary's engaged. You go after the knees. Correctly called by the officials. And that's a good rule change. I'm really glad to see that they finally instituted and eliminated all those chop blocks. There were just too many defensive linemen paying the price. Yeah, that's the, the kind of rule that should have gone no away question. years ago. No question. Whitey! Whitey! Off the fake, under pressure, sets up the screen. Here goes Elliott again. And Elliott all the way down the sideline inside the 25-yard line before Tracy Porter 
runs him out. So that's his second catch of the night to go with 22 carries. Well, they run this jet sweep so many times. It's kind of an interesting way to run the screen pass. You'll see, I think that's Lucky Whitehead coming across the screen. Going too fast, I couldn't tell. But you get Ezekiel Elliott out. And one of the things that made Ezekiel Elliott so appealing as a draft choice was how good he was as a receiver. We haven't seen a lot of that yet here with the Cowboys, but I think you'll see more and more of it as the season goes along. Five receivers all going out to the outside. He goes to Beasley, and Beasley almost got away but couldn't from Persinski. And then I'll make it third down. I tell you, late throws out in the flat like that, I use one of those, you go, whoa. But he was able to load up and get something on that throw. That was the first time I've really seen him lean into a throw like that. Beasley's out there, and he's sort of a little late, and I was thinking, you know, it was one of those, just have to be careful. Brzezinski might have had a chance if he had made a little sharper cut. Third and two at the 17. And they empty it. Five receivers. In the pattern and over the middle, it's caught inside the five. Des Bryant touchdown, Cowboys. Nice way to get your first touchdown pass. I was going to say the same thing. Congratulations, and why not? Set them up outside, go hard inside, and you know Des Bryant's not worried about getting hit by some safety. Makes a tough catch, gets it into the end zone for the young man in his first touchdown pass. Nineteen of twenty-four is. Mr. Prescott tonight, 248 yards, one touchdown, and still no interceptions in his young career. Bailey for the point after, six minutes into the fourth quarter. The Dallas Cowboys trying to win a game at home for the first time in over a year. Up by three scores. Sunday Night Football brought to you by the redesigned 2016 Volkswagen Passat, where family happens by direct tv if you call yourself a sports fan you got to get direct tv by Miller light the original light beer and by geico 15 minutes could save you 50 percent of car insurance yep come down here barbecue party barbecue in the dallas fort worth metroplex the jones family jerry with a big smile on his face and Steven and Jerry Jr. as well, because uh, they haven't had a lot to smile about in the home games over the past year and two weeks. But so far, so good tonight as it's down in the end zone by Thompson. 902 left, 31 to 10, Cowboys. Sunday night next week, boy, this is really interesting. We go to Pittsburgh. Kansas City's two and one. Beat the Jets today, cashed in on turnovers, and the Steelers got whopped by Philadelphia after starting out 2-0 and and looking really good. So it's the Chiefs against the Steelers from the Steel City next Sunday night. Here, first and 10 from the 25 for the Chicago Bears. Hoyer to the outside, White, and that'll be a first down, a gain of 13 up to the 38. Well, if you're looking for some good news as a Bears fan, it is, I think, it's been Kevin White. Uh, you know, I, I didn't see this as much in the first couple of games, but he looks much quicker. We're starting to see a little bit of that speed. He looks more comfortable catching the ball. And here he goes. And Hoyer sends it down to White. He cannot make the catch. Morris Claiborne denying him on the play, and it'll be second down. Ran right by Mo Claiborne and just didn't make the catch. It's a perfectly thrown ball. Right through his hands. Yep. Had him all set up and everything. Second and ten now. From the 38. Jordan Howard in the backfield the downside of that is how well does he know his pass protections that's always the issue with 
young running backs. And Lamford's been declared out for the night. It's in Howard out in the pad. And then over the middle, and the catch is made at the 37. That's Zach Miller, already in his seventh year in the league. Off injured at Jacksonville and uh, filling a role here. Of course, Martellus Bennett was that tight end last year. He's now in New England. Yeah, Zach Miller's had a nice game, had the touchdown earlier, and now without Martellus Bennett, their tight end position basically split into two people. Miller more of the receiver, Paulson more of the block. So he catches to Miller tonight. Now Hoyer goes down the sideline and incomplete. Claiborne again covering White on the play. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, and Claiborne a good job, but really Kevin White has to force the issue. He can't let Claiborne force him into the boundary. You can't get any closer than about that, and he's going to get driven all the way to the sideline, just nowhere to throw the football. Keep that line right there. You have plenty of room to fade out to the right and make a catch. You get squeezed into that boundary. The quarterback has no chance. Penalty. Chicago next week. Home against Detroit. Cowboys go to San Francisco. Ball start. Offense. Number 75. Five yard penalty. Second out. And that's Kyle Long. Well, time of possession, as you can see, last in the league coming in. Right now you have less than eight minutes to go. Even if they had the ball the whole way, they'd have it less than 28 minutes, and you know they're not going to have it. have it the whole way. Got to get that figured out. Second and 15. And on the outside, that's Jeffrey, and he gets forced out by Carr. He set up a third down and five after a gain of 10 yards. Obviously, Brandon Carr playing a little differently now with a big lead. He's going to allow. Some of those underneath throws. One thing you don't want to do is allow Jeffrey to get even even with you because then you get into those jump ball situations and Jeffrey is as good as there is doing that in the league right now. On third and five and that will be caught by Jeffrey with good tight coverage again by Carr. But he needed five and he got six and that's a first down for Chicago. Looked a little like Zach Miller on that one down on the goal line. <laughs> Just almost a drive block and got to the first down line and turned around and caught the football. You know, the Bears really had a chance in this game. They had a couple of possessions when this would have become, what, a one-score game, at least one possession where they could have. And Hoyer throws and Jeffrey goes up and he makes that catch. Hit there by Barry Church, and that's going to set up a first and goal. Yeah, he just doesn't care. You can tell. I mean, this is most receivers sort of flinch when they get thrown that ball. Safety coming. You know you're going to take a shot, but Jeffrey just keeps rebounding. Boy fires, and that is caught, and that is a touchdown for Zach Miller. So he keeps going Miller's number. Blows kisses to the crowd in the end zone. And the Bears are back within two touchdowns. Yeah, Barry Church blew him a kiss as soon as he caught that ball, and he still hang, was able to hang on to it. Once again, going against Byron Jones, who got picked a little bit by his own guy, and nice job by Miller hanging on after a big-time shot. Arguably above the shoulder area by Barry Church. So both Chicago touchdowns hauled in by Miller. Connor Barth out to tack on the 17th point. And it was six and a half to play in the fourth. Not quite over. Not speaking. 31-17. Already heading for week four, and uh, Thursday night kicks off the fourth week. It'll be Miami against Cincinnati on the NFL Network this coming Thursday evening. Well, clearly an onside kick is anticipated. Ten guys are up within five yards of the 45, and instead, 
Barth will bang the ball into the end zone. And the only guy who was back there was Beasley. So Dallas will take over at the 25 with six and a half to play in regulation. 31-17. In the NFC East since the merger in 1970, taking a look here at rookie QBs to start a season opener. Troy Aikman in 89, Quincy Carter in 01 for Dallas, and then RG3 back in 2012 for Washington. Now you've got Dak Prescott and Carson Wentz, so two of the four teams in the division starting rookies. And I think the, they've done fairly well. Yeah, it was interesting here and Jason Garrett talked about Carson Wentz when he put him on the blackboard and did the old John Gruden test, you know, drew up all the plays in a race and made him do it. I said he knew him better than I did. And the second best quarterback that we dealt with on that test was Dak Prescott. From the 25 yard line and a big night again continues for Elliott. Second and one. So the quarterbacks up to date Carson Wentz and of course he is now the uh, the big star in Philadelphia, 3-0 and are the Eagles, five touchdowns, no picks. Eli with a record of 2-1 and one and had a tough day today against Washington as the Redskins were able to pull one out. And there's Dak Prescott with 767 yards. Kirk Cousins finally was able to say you like that after today. Redskins needed that win desperately and they got it. Second and one. And it's a first down as Elliott will work the clock. So Chicago opted not to try the onside kick. And now the uh, key thing, of course, is to try to stop Dallas. Use your timeouts, but you, you can't use them when you get nine yards on first down as Elliott just did. You know, I think that decision about onsiding or not, to me, always depended on how my defense was playing. My defense really hasn't been able to stop them all day and the likelihood that you're going to stop them at the end of the game sort of told me pooch kick something to try and make an effort to at least pin them back. Well the Cowboys already have 437 yards of offense tonight and a few more here and that's Elliott again shutting his way over the right side for a gain of eight. Yeah because when you have an onside kick the returner standing at about the 15 or 20 yard line we'll talk about it here in a minute. With NFL Game Pass, you can watch the games you missed with condensed games in 45 minutes for the full broadcast version. And you can start a free trial at NFL.com slash Game Pass today. Did you ever play flag football? I did. I love flag football. Kids love it these days, especially. That was halftime here. What a throw for, for those kids. Get to play at AT&T Stadium. Second and three. After the Chicago timeout, Elliott for a gain of two. It's going to make it third down and one. And the timeout for Chicago. So Prescott and Elliott throw for 200 yards, run for 100 in one game. You know, you look at this at, at Prescott, and, and we, uh, we've said this in the past, because there are positions in American sports, North American sports, center field for the Yankees, going all the way back. Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle in the three years. You know, it started with, the, like, Boston Celtics with Bill Russell, the center. In hockey, you go back, like, the Montreal Canadiens. Who was the goalie? In football, it's been the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Who's the Dallas Cowboys quarterback? Don Meredith, Roger Staubach, uh, Troy Aikman. Yeah. yeah. Tony Romo and Danny White would be other guys. But, I mean, the Dallas Cowboy quarterback, that's a pretty good thing to have on your on your uh, resume. Third and one. Toss back to Elliott. And he comes from deep in the backfield, just about back to the line of scrimmage. Interesting. Yeah. Was he was he down at the end of this run, or bounce over for the first down? <laughs> I'm not sure that he was ever actually on the ground as he rolled over. Check this out. So he's going to go down. And he's going to roll over on top of the defender right there. I guess his knee was down right. just short of the marker. About a half yard short of it. So you can see he rolled over on Sam Acho, but I think his knee was down just prior to when he rolled over. 
Yeah, and they bring the change in from the other side of the field because those are the official sticks. Yeah, he's he's a, sure. I mean, even if John Fox wanted to challenge this, they're gonna, they're gonna have to take a look at this. Yeah. Chicago is challenging the spot on the field. No on question. You know, one interesting thing that came out of some of our conversations, I think clearly the Bears are going to win this. Yep. So we'll, uh, we already did the math on that one. But to talk to Scott Linehan, you know, he would fax Dak Prescott the call sheet for the next day of practice. And he said, in all the time I've been doing this, I've never really had a young player that every single day when he came in that next morning, I'd fax it to him at 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. He had the entire thing memorized. He would, he had to have practiced in front of a mirror to then come back the next day and call the plays in the manner in which he did, which built great confidence. And he talked about the fact that Jason Witten knew so much about this offense that when he got in the huddle, he was embarrassed if his play call wasn't perfect because Witten would call him out on it. And so it forced him to study harder and harder. But those little touches take young quarterbacks from being okay isn't it nice and he's got some physical skills to being hey we can win with this guy so they check it out remind me to tell you a scott linehan story in a second get a shot of him he was the coach of the rams you know for i think three seasons mm -hmm. got the job georgia frontier owned the team at the time Georgia never liked to get up until about 11 at night. So he got interviewed at like 1.30 in the morning at Georgia's house in Sedona, Arizona. And then she said, why don't we watch a movie? And he just happened to have a couple of DVDs in his attache case because he was forewarned. <laughs> he Go knew? ask him. Yeah. What was the movie? I don't know. Come on, man. Give me the details there. Snakes on a plane. I don't know. <laughs> well, if you're an assistant coach in the NFL, you've got a few stories to tell. After review, the runner's knee was down while the ball was at the 46 and a half yard line. Therefore, it would be fourth down and one and a half at the 46 and a half. Chicago will not be charged with timeout, and because this is a second challenge win, they will be allowed a third challenge. So it goes sort of from game over to game still on. Mm -hmm. This is one of those games you keep wanting to go, hey, you know, yeah, it doesn't look good, but. One big play here, and you've got a one-score game, and I'm betting they'll try an onside kick the next time. First things first, it's a fourth down, and... Game clock, 4.33. So put three more seconds on the game clock. Would you even consider some sort of a direct snap? Go for it here. You're at midfield. Two touchdowns. I don't, I don't know that I would have to. I mean, Jason Garrett sometimes is accused of being conservative. He went for an onside kick last week. It didn't work out. Who knows? But the clock, you know, it's, it's interesting. Chicago still has that one timeout, and they're going to keep it because the clock got wound once they put it in play again after the challenge. And then Jones is kicked in the direction of Royal and he makes a fair catch at the 11 a yard line. So Chicago has that one timeout. They're down by two touchdowns and you have exactly four minutes to go. Well, still plenty of time and plenty of big play receivers. You know, really, if Kevin White had caught that one ball, would have saved a little time, but these guys are very capable on the outside, and Zach Miller's made some nice plays down the middle, so plenty of big play options in this offense. Now, Sean Jeffrey tonight, he's your big play guy, caught five for 70 yards. And so the Bears spread it out. We got Jeffrey. Matched up with Carr on the outside at the top. Boyer shoots one underneath, and it's a short gain to Royal, who gets upended by Claiborne. 
That's when, as a receiver, you almost say, thank you, Mo Claiborne, for not flipping me on my head right there. He really kind of still grabbed that leg and kept him from going right back on his head. Two deep safeties makes it very tough to try and get anything going down the field. And on second and five. Wow. Good hand from the oh. wow. pressure and somehow Watt comes away with a football. How in the world? He reaches over the top of Claiborne to make that catch with one hand, I believe. Watch this. Over the shoulder pad, tips it back. That's sensational. Claiborne thought it was coming to him. Mm -hmm. At the 48-yard line, only a three-man rush this time, and he's covering, and that pass is too high. White looking for a flag and will not get one. It'll be second down and 10 with under three minutes to play. It's the right read on the outside, so they're basically playing these one lurk kind of coverages, but they're leaving some one-on-one -on -one opportunities out there to Jeffrey, and here's White on the other side. That time Claiborne had sort of had him pinned into the boundary. Sometimes now you want to take a look at faking that little fade and run a slant just to get them squared back up on you to try and go deep again. So the lack of a pass rush hurts the Cowboys. Over the middle, that is caught. That's the running back, Jordan Howard. And that's a first down inside the Dallas 40-yard line as the Bears hustle to the line of scrimmage. Howard with those 45 rushing yards, 36 of which came on his first carry tonight. Two and a half to play. Hoyer going deep down the right sideline and out of bounds. Cameron Meredith going the second time. He's been targeted tonight and complete second and ten. That one had a chance. That one definitely had a chance working up the boundary and Hoyer really just threw that one. This is one you're going to try and get the outside to release and there's a safety over the top. But there was definitely a hole in there, and Hoyer just completely missed through it. It's about as good an opportunity as you can hope for against a preventish defense like this. Jeffrey comes wide to the right this time. Royal in the slot. And 30 second timeout. Chicago's going to take a timeout, and that's their last. And for Hoyer, numbers decent here in the second half. Those two touchdown passes both coming to Miller, the tight end. But they fell behind early by a lot. And it's been a long road back. Well, sometimes I think when you play this Dallas defense, because they're expected to hustle so much, if you stay in a no-huddle offense against them and trap their defensive linemen on the field, that they can get worn out pretty quickly because of how much they're expected to hustle and follow the plays down the field. And they do love to just rotate those guys in there. The Bears have given them that opportunity tonight. Now on a second and ten. Again, only a three-man rush, but that's enough to put the heat on. And then he just has to sling it toward the bench. It'll be third down. A little pressure that time put on by David Irving, the big six foot seven guy that came over from Kansas City last year working against Bobby Massey. Massey's had a few tough games, but uh, been a little bit better in this one. Neither team able to muster very much of a pass rush tonight. In fact, there have been no sacks in the game. Third down and 10. From the 39. Play clock at two. And Hoyer almost got sacked, and in fact, that'll go as a sack, and then the ball is loose. And the Dallas Cowboys are waiting for Rolstad to come in there and tell us who recovered it. Dallas. So just. The second we say there's no sack, is almost a sack, then there is a sack, and a force fumble, and a recovery. Yeah, at that time, it was not the...
contact, I don't believe, of Irving that knocked him to the ground. So when he got tripped up by his own lineman here, by Massey, when he goes to the ground, that ball is loose until he's touched. And Irving has every opportunity to go in there and get it. And he doesn't. It's Benson Mayoa. Take a look at the coverage down the field here. Kevin White thought he had an opportunity. I think that knee's starting to hurt Alshon Jeffrey a bit. And this will take us to the two-minute warning, and we can pretty much come close to running the clock out on the other side of it. Meanwhile, Elliott can start to pad his stats a little bit here. And then on his 28th carry of the night, he has now gained 142 yards, and we go to the two-minute warning with the Cowboys on their way to a win at home for the first time in over a year. And that's what we'll have for you one week from tonight. Volkswagen postgame report coming up. Michelle's going to have the two rookies with her. You might have guessed that. Messrs. Tarico, Dungy, and Florio will wrap up the game. Other news, Chris and I will preview look at next Sunday's game coming up right after the game on the Volkswagen postgame report. How much do we love having Carrie Underwood singing our opening every week? Gets us all a little fired up and... Great superstar, country music. Ooh, Sunday night. She's tremendous. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> oh. Here's Ezekiel Elliott. You know what's amazing? Last year, I mean, the, the Cowboys were one and seven at home. One they were open to lost their last seven. They had in eight games here two takeaways. Two. I know. They had two tonight. Yeah, it's, uh, it's happening slowly here, and they're going to get some help, too, on the defensive side. Eventually, Marcus Lawrence comes back after a four-game suspension. That'll certainly help this pass rush. Got a couple other guys, but, you know, this is a team now offensively that can compete. Uh, and remember, the offensive line in this game was really missing two starters for at least well over a half. Tyron Smith... Arguably their best did not play due to shoulder and back injuries and Lyle Collins went out of the game in the middle of it So Ronald Leary and Chaz Green stepped in and they still were dominant So Cody Kessler 0-1 he should have been 1-0 and they missed three field goals In regulation lost in overtime to Miami Third and seven Elliott And he'll get taken down with a flag thrown at the 45-yard line And a little pushy shovey. Where's John Fox? Holding offense number 79. That penalty's declined. Result of the play is fourth down. A lot of stuff to work on in Chicago. Well, I started the game by saying, you know. Bears fans had to be in a funk. What would give them hope? Wrigley Field? <laughs> the Cubs? <laughs> yeah. That's a reversal from history right there, isn't it? It's been the place to be. Think they're going to win it? Oh, man. Baseball is so weird, you know? Three-man rotation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'll be favored. Jones. Royal collects at the nine. And it's uh, taken out of bounds up at about the 16 yard line with 139 remaining. How good were the rookies for the Cowboys this evening? Plenty good. Took a few shots along the way, but Prescott able to get down and. A rushing touchdown, and there's his first ever passing touchdown. Probably a little thank you to mom there, the woman that he gives all the credit to. Is an inspiration, and Ezekiel Elliott back to his hurdling form, put on a bit of a show, but 
If you're looking for what could be for the Dallas Cowboys for the next 10, 12, 15 years, welcome to the future. Well, tonight was pretty impressive on national television against the Bears, and that is caught up at the 35-yard line. So there's still a little bit of life here. Meredith making the catch. Bears do not have a timeout. First down up at the 40. Down to 120 left in red. And deep down the right sideline for White. Incomplete. You know, the one thing though, well, you, know, you know, when you see the, the rookies and they do well and all that stuff, and everybody's so excited. But I can never get the words of Bill Parcells out of my mind. Let's put away the anointing oil for a while. Yeah, okay? but you know, you can rub a little oil on that no <laughs> interception thing. <laughs> right. That deserves a little oil there. That was pretty good. And Elliott tonight, much different in his approach. And the common denominator of their success is going to be this offensive line. You know, even though they were missing a few parts of it, that's always going to be there. A little duck underneath and turning around to look upfield before he looked it into his hands was Jordan Howard, third and ten. Well, you go back to 1969, last rookie quarterback and running back combo to start a season opener. How'd those guys wind up doing? Pretty impressive, guys. I did a speech one time with Roger Stallback, so it's me and Roger Stallback, and I'm looking at his resume out there. The 25th and last thing on there was I won the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> That's a life well lived. Very. Third and ten. And up at the 50-yard line. Is it hauled in? Yes, it is. By Eddie Royal. And that's enough for a first down. Needed ten and got just ten. And Royal says, come on, let's go. Put Royal on the other side this time. 43 and pick him down. Dump it off to the rookie Howard. And take the ball from the 36-yard line. Clock continues to run. And the Cowboys are going to run on the pile. Clock ticks. All the little tricks of the trade coming into play. Nothing like the last 25 seconds to keep a bunch of people interested in this one, huh? Well, if you're ever going to hang around for a game, if you're a Cowboys <laughs> fan, this one might be the one. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be a Cowboys fan right now. Uh, yeah. Mr. Witten has done such yeoman work through the years. Little doubt in anybody's mind that he will wind up on the steps in Canton someday. Hard place. Second and ten. Oh boy, that's where you've got to snap the football. Mm -hmm. Fraction. Defense number 83, five yard penalty, second down. Cody Whitehair in there, rookie center, he'll learn that trick. Aaron Rodgers would have been screaming and yelling at this point because they have made a lot of big plays on getting a defender to jump off sides and get a free play, throw it in the end zone, not worry about what happens. That's caught and taken to the 16-yard line by Jordan Howard. I don't know. Ten seconds. And now seven. Looks good on the stat page, but mm -hmm. you don't have much of a chance to win the game, but you've got to throw a few in the end zone, right? All I know is that some hearts are beating fairly furiously right now. <laughs> <laughs> People love football like that. Oh, yes, they do. They love football like that. <laughs> Seven seconds left. From the 16 yard line. Hoyer to the end zone. 
And that's thrown away with two seconds. Were those hearts cheering for or against the pass well, interference on that? All I know is a lot of people are being pushed right to the edge right now. <laughs> Final play, barring a defensive foul, coming up. Now Mr. Prescott's going to go to two and one. Ezekiel Elliott with 140 yards tonight on 30 carries. And the final play of the game, in all likelihood, is batted. And almost picked off, and that will do it. And the Dallas Cowboys, it took them over a year to win a home game. But they do it here, and then John... The game is over. All right, whatever it was, the game is over. Holding on the offense just to make it official. So that's it. 31-17 Dallas. Volkswagen Post Game Report coming up next.